Hello, dear viewers. This is Talk to Oben. Today we are joined by Dr. Antonio Gitacho, a senior researcher at the Institute of Foreign Affairs. Welcome to Talk to Oben, Dr. Antonio. Thank you. To start with, is there any affinity between diplomacy and war in broader terms? Thank you so much. Uh, uh, before just uh, that to give you you know, a precise answer whether they are interlinked or not first let's see uh, what diplomacy and war means uh, we can't say that they are not one and the same or they are directly interlinked because diplomacy is any means uh, other than war short of war uh, to just pursue your international affairs or to enforce your foreign policy to run your foreign policy on to others or to change the, the behavior of others towards your state in a peaceful negotiating and uh, using dialogues both are actually uh, tools of statecraft diplomacy is one tool that's the way that you use in a peaceful way war is also another tool but um, sometimes diplomacy might help to make uh, the war uh, effective to this it, it may decide the winner it may tell you just how the the war is just uh, have a just cause uh, so uh, there are uh, diplomatic types that actually are very much closer to uh, uh, war uh, so for example uh, when you talk about uh, coercive diplomacy uh, of course, this is what actually in, in it is a real sense. It is not just a war, but it is very closer. It is a kind of economic sanction, influencing others or uh, pursuing your issues or just say uh, influencing other states by uh, different means, economic sanction and maybe other embargo strategies. So coercive diplomacy is a gray line between just peace and war and peace. Uh, related with this, there is uh, hard power diplomacy. Uh, sometimes, in a very realist world, uh, there are uh, actually we can uh, classify in two school of thoughts: the realist school of thought and the idealist or liberalist school. Of thought. In the realist school of thought, uh, we are living in a world of uh, anarchism, anarchic order, power structure, power order is there. So always, military power or hard power is important to enforce. Uh, your foreign policy onto others or to change the behavior of other states towards your state. But that should not be uh, a working a philosophy in the idealist or liberalist school of thought. In that case, humans have rational needs, so mutual cooperation, mostly in multilateral forms, in a multilateral modality, states without uh, using hard power can pursue their interest can achieve their national or strategic interests. These are two different school of thoughts. But when we see the uh, pr practical reality in our world, still uh, uh, war is not an outdated uh, a tool of statecrafts. It may help. It, will, it should be the last resort, actually. After you have exhaustively using the diplomatic way of uh, pursuing your agenda at an international level or between the states, finally, you may have just a cause that you can't avoid that war. So diplomacy can make wars effective. It may help you to just sell your agendas. It is a way of showing that you have a just cause to uh, be in a war. But uh, diplomacy is a peaceful way of uh, pursuing or uh, winning other, the behavior of other states well, that they uh, have uh, uh, towards your state. So as you have rightly stated, diplomacy is a, uh, a kind of relationship between states uh, whereby they rely on mutual understanding and common understanding for common benefits between two states or two parties. Yeah. But when it comes uh, uh, to the context of the developed and the developing countries, it doesn't uh, uh, go into action in accordance with the stated the theories that exist with regard to diplomacy. Uh, so uh, wars break out in developing countries and we do not see this happening uh, developed nations and they impose embargoes and other restrictions on developing countries. What is your take on this? Yeah, in principle and according to the UN declaration, every state have its sovereign power. In principle at least. Uh, what the practice has been showing across ages might be different. Sometimes 
diplomatic power uh, might be related with uh, a different uh, capacity, economic capacity, military capacity, uh, development the type of society or population you have built through ages. All these capacities might help you to uh, just make a kind of effective diplomacy. But in principle, all the states are sovereign, so just accord, uh, in principle, uh, they just uh, may put themselves at equal footing. Uh, but that doesn't mean that really the reality on the ground may not show this one. But sometimes there is a, a, a misperception that only wars might just be uh, belong to the developing nation only. But recently in Europe, uh, at the very door of Europe, there is a deadliest war between uh, Ukraine and Russia, as you know. Uh, if states just feel something that may affect their national interest, if they are in a security dilemma, probably war might be the last resort to pursue your political interest in other means. So war is an extension of politics in other way, as a, a common saying goes. There might be different uh, uh, difference in terms of diplomatic weight or in terms of uh, between uh, states. Uh, one problem is that uh, really we are always asking for sponsorship. We are highly dependent, economically dependent on uh, uh, superpowers in the world. So, so something if you are looking for a kind of a sponsorship, uh, it is inevitable to expect that those uh, sponsors will have a stake on your interests. But uh, one thing that I believe is that you have to define first your strategic interest, your national interest. After that, uh, in diplomacy, it is a kind of market. It, it will be just done through a give and take strategy. Uh, you don't have an interest, you don't have a leverage, just say for example in countries like Ethiopia where uh, it finds itself in a very geostrategic position. Uh, if you are genius enough in just sailing out the different leverage, uh, lever we don't have leverage. Uh, so it is a matter of showing that you are important to the world. At the same time, also we need other states for our existence, for our survival. So it is a kind of uh, pursuing your agenda through dialogue and peaceful negotiation, other than war. This is what diplomacy means. Are we equal in terms of diplomacy at the international arena? In principle, yes, but in reality, it doesn't mean that. For the, the factors I have mentioned earlier, uh, there are differences between states. Sure, they have, for example, the Western powers to have interest in the affairs of the in internal affairs of the developing countries like Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. uh, when we take our uh, uh, situation in which we are struggling today as a nation, as a country, uh, they just raise an issue of democratization and uh, the issue of uh, humanitarian access. I mean, humani uh, opening humanitarian corridor for these donors. And uh, what some critics say is the West usually uses uh, democratization and humanitarian aid as a, a, a means to meddle into the internal affairs of uh, these developing countries like that of ours. So uh, how do you assess uh, what is going on at global and national level in, 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 in light of this uh, democratization and the humanitarian uh, aids? Okay, that's a good point. Uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, in Ethiopian uh, intellectual discourse, this is a very much heightened agenda that the Western uh, powers or the superpowers are interfering in developing nations' internal uh, affairs. That's obviously uh, true, it might be true, but uh, as a matter of my personal belief, and to the school of thought, I, uh, I would like to subscribe, or, or I, I have already subscribed. I believe that it is better to look inside out. We need to reverse the approach that we are uh, looking at this agenda. Why superpowers or countries have a stake in your internal agenda? We have to analyze uh, the status of uh, a certain nation or the geopolitical uh, location, the geostrategic position of a certain nation. Uh, fortunately, Ethiopia uh, finds itself in a very vital geostrategic position that uh, any superpower will not abandon this country mm. all of a sudden because they have some strategic interest to serve every nation, every state have its own interest uh, strategic to serve and this will be the governing uh, principle for every nation. 
First, it is Ethiopians or the, the, uh, it is the responsibility of Ethiopian nation or the Ethiopian state uh, who, sh who should very much be worried about serving the interest of uh, its people. But there are pretexts. The Westerns, as we know, especially those led by the US, have uh, their own uh, values to sell to the world. This is one form of diplomacy, by the way. It is a kind of uh, cultural diplomacy. The, their values are democracy, human rights, equality, gender equality, and the like. These are depicted to be the Western values. Whether that is true or not, what type of democracy, what type of human right, uh, can you have some contextual adaptation that might be uh, left for uh, researchers or for the academia. But these are the Western values. They claim these are the values they want to just send out to the world. So we can't, uh, in principle, we can't condemn democracy. It's not important for any nation. You can't condemn human right to be respected uh, before any states. You can't condemn equality of gender because there are moral side issues sometimes. So we have to be careful in this case. But are they really, when they're saying this, are they in their real sense talking about a democracy whatsoever? It is a matter of, it is an agenda of uh, the state. First, we need to respect human rights. But at the same time, those uh, may use as a pretext. Sometimes, uh, domestically, if you have some kind of problem, uh, politically divided society. Uh, there are agents or groups that may just ask the sponsorship of external powers or other forces outside who have key interest on the region, uh, even in the affairs of Ethiopia, in our surrounding, in the Horn region. So uh, these forces or these external powers might to exploit uh, this opportunity and to make just work to the benefit of there. It is an important region and Ethiopia has been an anchor state for long who has been just uh, just considered as a natural land of the, the West power. We have good diplomatic relationship if you look go back at a glance to the history, diplomatic uh, relationship between the US and Ethiopia uh, we had really enjoyed high times of diplomacy but sometimes there are crackdowns. One thing is that there, there is a current war in the north there are humanitarian crises we don't deny. Sometimes we need to acknowledge if there is a, product, a protracted war, inevitably there will be human crises, collateral damage everywhere, in Tigray, in Afar, in Amhara, everywhere else. There are conflicts as well in a period of transition. This, there are some things we need to just... But so these people claim that they are very much worried about to respect uh, human rights, to avoid atrocities. So, we cannot really collide to this uh, moral issue. But we can curve the sanction and the imposition upon the Ethiopian government through diplomatic ways. Yeah. How we frame our agendas, how we reverse this, how we produce counter-narratives, how we sell the facts on the ground. This is what matters is this one. How we are meeting people, policy makers, lawmakers, in different means by maybe employing lobbyist firms, high-grade lobbyist firms maybe, how the 21st century diplomacy can be done but between states, how we are using our uh, different uh, just uh, attributes that we had in the Western countries, especially in the U residing in the U.S. and um, the diaspora, the intellectual diaspora, how we are exploiting our diplomatic ways of selling uh, our agenda matters most. So. Uh, the public strategy, the public relations strategy we are pursuing, the commission strategy we are using, uh, might just be affected or we lost to uh, a kind of uh, terrorist group. So it is a ma the way how you are putting your agenda at the mind of the international community matters most, rather than what is going on in terms of human rights, democracy, whatsoever. But don't forget that these superpowers have a strategic interest in the region, in the Horn of Africa. And Ethiopia is not allowed to be destabilized because there are damage to the world. We are living in a, the world order is a globalization. We are in a globalized world. There is no boundary to problems. 
there is no boundary to benefits even. There will be diffusion of problems. When the state, this volatile region will be destabilized overnight and Ethiopia as an anchor state weakened so much at this time, probably the terrorism will be at its peak. Yes, migration is another concern of the West, the West power, and different problems will emerge. This will not be allowed by any state. But about your, uh, is that conceding your strategic interest? No. But diplomacy is any means other than one, just that you, are, you need to show that you are important to the world. To sure, in lay with that. Uh, I would like to ask you one question, and uh, you have raised very important points, in, especially in uh, the, uh, the points that you have laid down. Uh, so, uh, especially in this Horn region, which is volatile and rampant in just conflicts, uh, uh, many activists are emerging, claiming that East African nations should uh, develop inward-looking attitudes. And, uh, so. Uh, uh, we don't have to always uh, point our fingers towards the West or uh, any, anybody else uh, apart taking and shouldering our responsibilities to protect ourselves, uh, to save ourselves. Because uh, as you see, globalization is uh, coming with different facets which uh, can be understood and which can sometimes uh, challenge you to understand what is really in it. So. Uh, is there any uh, significant point that we can uh, dwell on in relation uh, to the Horn region? Ethiopia, it, uh, as you said, it is an anchor, a very important state in the Horn. It is, uh, I think, the most populous country in the region and the second in Africa. And also terrorists are uh, mobilizing their forces in the neighboring countries and also uh, linking themselves with uh, rebel groups in Ethiopia. Uh, what would you say here? Many things uh, can be uh, said in order to better the diplomatic uh, engagement of Ethiopia with the West powers. The first one is we need to understand how Ethiopia's geopolitical uh, geostrategic position is important. Sometimes it is related to geography, you cannot uh, just uh, deny uh, the, the location we are in as a country is very much vital. Uh, at the same time, it is a strategic interest will also invite many interests. There is a great uh, competition uh, among uh, superpower. There is uh, power competition. Uh, there is proliferation of military power in this region. Uh, Djibouti in Port Sudan, recently in Eritrea, put different superpowers have an interest. Why that interest? It is a matter of uh, understanding how much your location is important. Diplomacy is not simply uh, just begging and, and uh, really uh, crying over uh, to obtain something uh, to your state or nation only. It is a kind of market uh, you, you need to show that you can just offer or provide as a nation to the world in terms of peace diplomacy. Ethiopia has uh, spent many uh, high times or high days in diplomacy uh, across different regimes. Uh, so, uh, Ethiopia is one of the populous, it is a water tower in the region, uh, it is geography, it is climate, it is arable land. Proposed. All these things will just uh, can be uh, interpreted or can be cashed into a national power. These are the determinants that uh, decide whether a certain country has a national power or not. There, there are weaknesses with in and out problems actually. Still, uh, in the near future will be uh, a, power, a hydropower hegemon in the region at least. Mm -hmm. But one thing is that you have to understand how our geostrategic location is important to the region and to the world. This, the other one is we need to just uh, reframe our mindset, especially in the intellectual circle. We, th we should not simply project everything to external power. We should not condemn uh, our failures uh, uh, um, only for external powers. Every country, every state have its own interest. We need to first admit this. But it is because of our domestic problems that people are using the cracks to interfere our internal agendas. So uh, we need to just revisit how we are viewing the West. As, at one point, we are very much in need of uh, AIDS, economic AIDS, development AIDS, in different ways, where uh, 
We have been in good terms with these countries some years before. It is because of the great Ethiopian Renaissance Dam and the war in the north that makes a kind of diplomatic uh, problem between these two states. But we can just uh, reconsider and we can shift track. We, can, we need to reassess how we are pursuing as a nation. This is one important thing. So the other one thing is that uh, we need to just have uh, serious duties on some aspects. We need to have intellectuals who are good to understand uh, geopolitics, international relations, public relations, how we are really selling our agenda, uh, how we are just making a kind of unified nation with all difference at hand. Uh, we need just to avoid such kind of domestic uh, uh, political division. So it is because of the internal weakness uh, that really uh, puts us to be in a kind of uh, problem. At the same time, TPLF has been in the state apparatus for the last 27 years. It, it will know the bureaucracy. It has made different good friends at international uh, organizations. It has good diplomacy in the state, whether it be in the Democratic Party, the incumbent that is leading the American uh, nation. Uh, they have using different instruments to portray that they have a just court for the war. At one point, they were good at really pursuing uh, aggressive diplomacy through different mechanisms. They are employing different lobbying firms. So, the problem is that uh, as a responsible citizen, including imagining myself in that even category, uh, there are miles to go. Uh, just now, there are uh, encouraging moves uh, in terms of bettering the, 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 what we lost in terms of diplomacy. We are uh, making good performance in terms of public diplomacy, in terms of our digital diplomacy. We are selling our agendas. We are able to just the mind of others. It is just making uh, really uh, how others view Ethiopia region, how others view Ethiopia matters most. There are encouraging moves, still really uh, much is expected from all of us as a responsible citizen to fight for our country to sustain the nation. And one final point, as an exit point that we are going to raise, what is your opinion to save Ethiopia? Internal strength matters most for me. As a country, uh, if we have uh, built up on the common goods, regardless of the diversity, it is a blessing for us, regardless of uh, the different political interests, the different questions we had at hand. Uh, but we need the country to sustain. To, to save your country, internal strength matters. Sometimes uh, we are not able to prioritize political agendas. We are piling up agenda after an agenda every time. We need to exert much effort on things that matter most first. At this time, there is no concerning problem than the war at the north. We need to resolve this one, if possible, in a peaceful way. In a peaceful way. If not, at any cost, the nation has to sustain dissolution of the state should not be, at any cost, it should not be under question. There are problems regarding the, the way the West powers, the different super view, maybe the incumbent might be different, but this can be curved. But there are people who are just uh, taking the agenda of external powers internally. It might be within the structure, it might be among the uh, different rival groups, there are different inter in the region. Our internal instability, political problem, and the political culture we have been through for long uh, might have really helped to, to make us susceptible for such kind of problems. So, uh, to deter such kind of aggression, interference of Western powers to internal domestic and to, to save the nation, first, we inward looking is very much important. Uh, there are national dialogues on the making, uh, and some uh, workers have been uh, on board in terms of uh, to just pursue national dialogue. Uh, uh, 
there are different activities on the side of the government. Uh, we need to just make uh, uh, things to be uh, in a good track. If you build your external strength, if you make the people to stand for a certain national cause, we can really can uh, curb or deter the aggression that we expect to come from external powers. That is the only solution. Thank you, Dr. Antena, for uh, joining us. It was talk to Oben. We, we were joined by Dr. Antena, a senior researcher at the Institute of Foreign Affairs. Stay tuned to Oben Horn of Africa for more programs and news. <music>